everybody, Caleb here. Today I've got this old Kalamazoo. Um, I, my guess is this Kalamazoo is probably from the 40s. Uh, you might know the Kalamazoos were made by Gibson in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So, you know, this is a really cool old guitar. I'm not 100% sure on the model on this. It's an arch top. It's double bound, which, you know, for me looking around isn't um, all that common. So, it's a really cool old thing, and it has been played to death. I mean, it has been played and played and played, and it actually still kind of plays. That's me not tuning it up, and it's awful quiet, but... I mean, it has been played beyond what any other instrument's ever been played, I think. If you look at this fretboard, um, the third fret has actually been played all the way through on the high E string. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's actually been played all the way down to the tang. There's no fret left there underneath the E string right here. So, and you know, it's not the only one that's that way. It's the same way on the third fret on the B string, and they've all been played flat up there, down to the board. It's actually uh, naturally scalloped the board in a couple of places. So it's fret, and then the board does this, and then the other fret. Uh, along with that, there's a break on the side right here that's just got some tape on it. We're going to see what we can do about that. There's a bit break up the back, which doesn't look all too bad. The tuners are broken. You can see here this one's broken and they're all bent up and I'm not sure if that does anything actually. So we'll see what we can do with those. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just set this down and start taking the strings off of it. I think that's all there is to do. So let's go. So we'll start tuning this down and I'll get an idea of how these tuners actually are. noticing now they don't really match. Two of them are have different posts than the rest of them. The D and the G tuner's posts are entirely different. This guitar is actually in the same set as the True Tone electric that I did and the Fender 12 string that I did recently. So if you haven't seen those, this is very similar in uh, condition, at least cosmetically. Now, the True Tone was actually probably cosmetically worse because of the damage that was done to the True Tone. Now, this one is all play wear. You can see all through here, it's just been picked to death. I don't think I'm really going to do anything with this. I think we'll probably, uh, you know, dust this off, take the dirt off of it, and oil this wood, and that's it. I don't think we're going to do any uh, major touch-ups to it. I want it to look 80 years old. I don't want, you know, someone going, oh, well, it looks all right. I want it to go, wow, that thing's been played. That's kind of the direction we're going to go with this. After I've pulled that bridge off here, I notice the center seam is uh, coming apart. I can move each side separately, and the seam is coming up loose, so we'll have to address that. You know, it's just going to take a lot of cleanup. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this pit guard off, and we're going to try to get some of the dirt off of here first. Um, I think that's a good plan of action. I'll take the pit guard off. I'll probably take the tailpiece off too. I just don't want it, you know, waving. So we'll take that off as well, and then we'll basically just try and clean this thing up first of all. So I've got the uh, pit guard off. I haven't gotten the tailpiece off yet, but I thought this is probably good enough to show you a little bit of this. I've got some really warm water, and I'm just going to lightly damp a cloth. I'm just rubbing it down. If you want to see that, there's that. Um, 
I do not want to put too much moisture on this top, especially with all this wood that's, you know, now bare with no finish on it. I can definitely cause a whole bunch of problems if I do that. And it won't be, you know, immediate problems. It'll be down the road problems. So, I'm taking a dry one now and just wiping it down. I do think we're getting somewhere good. I'm going to put a glove on here real quick. I do think this is a really cool guitar, and it's going to be really cool when we get it cleaned up a little bit. You know, um, this guitar is old, but not all old ones look like this. Not all old ones have been played like this. I think it kind of says something when a guitar's been played this much. You know, someone really enjoyed this guitar, and considering its age, several someones really enjoyed this guitar. I already think we've had a vast improvement here. What's kind of funny is right here under the pit guard is really shiny, and it's actually really smooth. That pit guard has actually protected that finish pretty good. That's cool. Um, I still see some streaks of stuff. So I've got quite a bit more cleaning to do here. So I'll keep working on this and I'll bring you back in a little bit when I've made a little bit more progress. So I think I'm going to work on this crack. I've got this, you know, I've, I've cleaned this up quite a bit. Mostly just, you know, taking the dirt and the grime off of here. I took the tape that was on here off and this crack moves really freely. It's actually pretty loose. You know, I can push in and I think I can get it lined up. Which is why, I think you can see I've got this raised off the table. I'm going to try to use some clamps to make sure it lines up and then squeeze it. This is a very delicate procedure because, you know, I'm going to put a clamp across this way or even on the bottom. But if you tighten those down too much, you're going to bust these sides way more than, you know, I could, way more than I could fix. So, I got to be really careful with this. Uh, basically, I'm going to start kind of at this end and start working my way this way. Hopefully, we'll get somewhere good with that. I've got the glue out and I've got some clamps sitting around here and I've got leather. So, hopefully we can protect everything. I'm hoping this turns out well. We'll have to see. And this might be easier to, for me to start by moving it around. It's going to be hard to keep this all in camera. So, we'll just have to see what I can do here. So there was not a good way for me to show this, but I did get this lined up best I could, and it's clamped up. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of water and try to clean up some of the squeeze out. I think this is going to look pretty good. It won't be perfect, but considering a guitar of this age, it's going to be far better than, uh, you know, having clear tape over it. So we're going to work on the center seam now. That side's got plenty of time to set up. And I want to get this seam glued back together. So I'm going to stick some glue on there. I'm going to try to work it a little bit. So I'm going to work these sides. Hopefully that will work some down in there. I've got this paintbrush and it's a slightly moistened paintbrush. So it will thin that glue just a little bit. We'll work it some more. Hopefully that will help kind of wick the glue down into that seam. Clean that off real quick. I think it's actually going to be pretty good. I can see there's a little bit of glue in that crack. So I'm going to run 
this long clamp across the sides and just like before when you're putting a clamp on the sides you really got to be careful how much pressure you're putting on it because you can bust the sides really really easily so now that I did that what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put a little bit of downward pressure on this seam and I'll do that with a couple of wedges and the bar of the clamp I might have to set this up at its highest point so it can't fight me any and then we can make up some space with a block So that ought to be good. That puts a little bit of downward pressure on that seam so that it kind of pulls it together just a little bit more. We'll give that some time to set up and that center seam should be far better than it was. So I'm going to do a very similar process to what I did on the top at the center seam but now on the back with this brake. I guess fortunately and unfortunately it's a lot more open. Fortunately I can get a lot more glue in there. A lot easier, but unfortunately, it's a huge crack. So since the cracks in the body have been addressed, I've started the refretting process here. And it's been quite the procedure. You know, I'm trying to keep the wood a little moist so that it's soft. So hopefully I don't get quite as much chip out. And these frets have been just worn so much it's so hard to get a grip on anything. But I've started getting this first one out, and I did actually heat it up to see if it would help. So that's that first fret out of there. It's probably still pretty warm. Um, this isn't too, too bad. We're going to have to do a lot of sanding work to the fretboard just because of how misshapen it is now. Um, you know, I think whatever we can do to get these frets out of here is just going to be what we got to do. So, I'll show you a little bit of what I've, you know, what I've been doing. And it's, I got this paintbrush and some warm water and I'm running it across the fret to hopefully get the wood start, you know, starting to soften up. And I've actually got the soldering iron out uh, just to heat the frets. I think it's worth doing on this. And this is an old kind of junky soldering iron. It's kind of, yeah, you can see it's pretty dirty. So it, uh, it starts bubbling the junk out of the fret slots, which I think is helping release. I think it is. There's actually so little fret left on that end. I basically destroyed that end of the fret. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it. But there's just, there's so little height left on the actual, the fret part, not the tang, that I destroyed it pulling it out of there. And the next fret, the third fret, there's actually no fret left. It's just tang. You can see there, it's worn all the way through. So that's going to be fun to pull out of there. <laughs> uh, this is quite the time consuming process and I'm trying to, you know, be really careful not to tear these up any more than I have to. The fret slots that is. So, you know, 
It's not going to be all that interesting to watch me do all of it. I'll show maybe just a little bit more. And then I'll go ahead and get the rest finished off camera. So I just got done pulling all these frets and the one piece of advice I have to give is keep your CA glue close because you are going to have chip out. Um, you know, you can really mitigate the chip out you have but it's really hard to anticipate you know, what's really going to happen once you start pulling these frets out. So the CA glue in that case is your friend. Um, now I'm going to work on basically resurfacing this fretboard um, because of all of the wear, both the finger grooves and the fact that it does a wave. I'm just going to basically take a radius block and sand this down. I'm going to be very careful to not take any more than I absolutely have to off of this. You know, being a vintage instrument, I don't want to remove too much, but to keep this thing playable, for the future, I need to make this, you know, so that I can put frets in it and it'll look good. It'll play right. The problem was that the fret, the old frets were just worn so much that we were now wearing into the board. And I, I can replace the frets, but the board still has this, this wear, this wonk to it, which won't make new frets go in or look right, go in right, look right operate correctly. So I'm going to basically just resurface the board. I shouldn't take too much off of here, but it will hopefully get, you know, a more even surface to it. I've been trying to get this nut off of here, and I'm probably going to have to replace this nut anyway, because new frets typically means the nut's going to be way too low. So I'm going to end up probably just smacking that off of there. So that came off of there in one piece, so that's good. So now that's out of my way, and I can start working on, uh, you know, making this this board a little more even. So we'll get started on that next. So I'm just going to start with some 120, which is pretty rough, and it shouldn't take me too long to get basically done with this and my radius block. One of the more important things to remember when you're doing something like this when you're leveling the board is to make sure that it is staying level. This Kalamazoo doesn't have an adjustable truss rod. I'm, you know, I don't even know if it really has a, a truss rod installed at all, you know, a non-adjustable one. But, you know, when I'm surfacing this, I need to keep, like, keep a straight edge, you know, to check that there's not, I'm not taking off way more on one end than the other. And I can see that it's actually sitting pretty good. And I'm not going to be able to take all of these fingernail grooves out. I would just thin this board way too much, you know, taking these really deep ones out. But you can see I have made this quite a bit nicer. You know, it doesn't match right now because of how dark this is. But once we get this oiled, this will all blend in together and it will look far, far better. I believe I'm just about done here. I started off with 120, and then I started doing uh, 320 here to start really smoothing this out, and it's looking really good. There's maybe just a couple more spots. I'm gonna keep sanding at this, but we're almost done um, sanding on this board. So now that I'm pretty happy with the board, I need to make sure that the fret slots are deep enough. You know, because we've taken any height off of it, these fret slots, you know, could be too shallow to house the new frets. So I've got this saw, and it's taped up so that I'm only going to the depth that I've got underneath there. This saw just fits in the slot perfectly. I've already done the first couple of frets. And 
so this does two things really. It makes sure the slot is deep enough and it also cleans that slot out all the way. And I got to be pretty careful with this. I want to keep this exactly, you know, exactly 90 degrees to the fretboard here. So I keep these slots going straight. And like right here, I got a little bit of CA glue in the slot from gluing a chip, gluing some tear out down. And so this will have to recut that. All right, so I've started putting frets in this now and it's not going the easiest I've ever done. Um, basically, I'm just putting it in here and then tapping it in with the hammer. And these are supposed to be the same radius as the board. That's how I ordered them. I'm noticing they're maybe just a little bit less radius than they should be. Typically just a dot of CA glue and holding them down fixes it pretty good. Um, I also took the tuners off because as I was driving these in, everything was shaking and it was rattling the tuners, so this works just a little bit better. This is going to be kind of a timely procedure and I'm going to have to move this all around to, you know, if I need to see a glue one in, I got to move it all around and there's not a good way to show this on the camera. So I thought I'd just show you a little bit of it here. So I'm driving these in and then like this one, these edges don't really want to stay down. So I'll take the CA glue and just start on one end. Just put a dot of it right at the slot, hold it down, let it dry, and I'll just flip it over and do the same thing. So once both ends are well stuck, or if I don't have to do that at all and it's just well stuck, I'll take uh, these big end cutters and just cut the ends off. I try to keep my hand over it just in case they go flying somewhere or they try to go flying somewhere. That keeps them down and I'll just add them to the pile of old frets. So basically that's it. This is going to take me quite a bit of time to get good and get it right. So I won't film much more of this. I'll just get the rest of these frets in here and then we'll work on getting them a little more properly shaped. So now that I've got all of these installed, I've started working on taking the ends down to the fretboard, and that's mostly done with my file. I'm just working away at it, and then as I get closer, and I am pretty close at this point, I'll start putting this kind of angle on it. That will get them all the way down to where they need to be. You can see I've got some tape on here so that I don't mar up the top. It's just a little more uh, insurance that everything's going to turn out the way I want it to. So I've got this looking good and feeling pretty good. The next thing I got to do is make sure these frets are level now that I've you know just installed them. Um, I need to you know just make sure that the tops are sitting at the same height and that's just a regular you know regular fret leveling not all that different from any other guitar. So they're actually pretty good. I just, you know, making sure they're totally good. I'll now get the crowning file out and we will crown these and then we're going to work on the corners quite a bit on these brand new frets. So now I'll come through with the crowning file and make sure they're all perfectly crowned. And because these are new and I just ground these, these are this edge is going to be totally flat. So I'm going to want to make sure I knock those corners off really well. already a lot better. So I got them all crowned. Now I'm coming through with my fret dressing file and rounding these edges off to a you know much better degree. These new frets, you know, they don't have any rounding on them. This is really, really necessary to make this guitar feel better. So I just finished up the last of cleaning this fretboard up now. Uh, you know, all the frets have been crowned and polished. I showed a little bit of that, but I've been trying to get this done. I'm on a little bit of a time crunch to get this thing 
done so we can get the video out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start wiping this down with boiled linseed oil. Uh, the, both the fretboard and this bare wood on the body, pretty much the whole body is going to get, you know, kind of rubbed down with the boiled linseed oil. And, you know, the thing to note with the boiled linseed oil is you have to get the boiled stuff. The raw stuff will never dry. It, it'll just be a real oily mess. Anyways, that's what you have to get. I'm going to just put this on a cloth and start rubbing it on here. Now a lot of the times you'll see me use the Be Good wood oil for the fretboards instead of this boiled linseed oil. And the only reason I'm using the boiled linseed oil today is because I'm putting it on the body as well. And the reason behind that is kind of non-existent. I don't really have a reason why I decide to put the linseed oil on the body as opposed to the be good oil. I just feel like the boiled linseed oil works better for the body and since I'm putting it on the body I may as well just use it on the fretboard as well. It's not all that big of a difference for the fretboard. So once you rub this all on here, you really got to take a clean cloth and take it back off, take all the excess off. You just don't want to leave that extra boiled linseed oil on there. That's a vast improvement on that body, getting that linseed oil on there. And it, it's kind of a cleaner as much as it is kind of a conditioner. So it really gives it an even sheen. It's very, very better looking. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do this over the whole body, the back, the sides, the, the headstock as well. I'll get take care of that, and then we will move on from there. So it's looking pretty good. I've gone ahead and got the tuners all installed, and they're all replacement tuners. So they look a lot better than the the old ones. They they work a lot better. They don't you know look quite as old, but I did a little bit of work on making them look a little older. So those are installed. I've also worked on the bridge a little bit. The saddle was cut, well, the saddle slots were cut really, really low into this bridge. So I just took it over to the sander and added some radius to it, took some height off the top of the saddle. I think it's going to be fine. I've also gone ahead and cleaned up the saddle a little bit. I oiled it with the same linseed oil we did on the guitar, and I think it's looking better. And we're just about ready to start kind of putting this all back together now. I'm going to get the tailpiece back on it. As for the nut, I did something, you know, a little bit out of the ordinary for me. I did end up just putting a shim underneath the nut to raise it above the new frets. Typically, that's not what I would do, but because this instrument is on much more of a budget, and I'm trying to get this done, you know, quickly, a little shim is not a big deal for this nut, so it got a mahogany shim. I think we're ready to start setting this thing up now. Um, I gotta get the metal parts back in the bridge and I've gotta get the tailpiece on. So I think I'll start with the tailpiece. So there's not a whole, whole lot of life left on this, uh, on this bridge. But I noticed it's not fitting the top super, super well. So I am going to sand it a little bit to fit the top a little bit better. I've just basically set some sandpaper on the top and I'm just barely moving this back and forth. And it makes the feet of the bridge fit the top. If you do it well, it makes it fit perfect. That's an improvement. It's still not perfect. And I don't want to take too much more off of here just because I don't want, you know, I don't want to make this too thin, too weak. But I think it could go for just a little bit more. I think that's going to be about as good as this bridge gets. Uh, you know, there's, it's just, it's getting really low. I don't want to take it too thin. If, you know, I had a new bridge, then I could do that. But I'd like to keep this 
this old one on here. So little adjustments just to make it a little better makes more sense for this rather than replacing it. So I believe I could string this up or I could put the pit guard on it. It doesn't really matter which order I go in. I'm going to go ahead and put the pit guard on it, I think. And then we'll string it up. So this pit guard hole is actually totally stripped out. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill this with a couple of little pieces and some glue and then we'll just re-drill that hole. So I'll put a little bit of glue in the hole and then I've got some little pieces of mahogany I'm going to put in there and that should be good. We'll just cut those off and then re-drill that hole and then that screw will go right in there and grab just as good as it did new. So give that some time to dry and then we'll get that pit guard on there. While that's drying, I am going to go ahead and get this thing strung up. I at least get strings on it. These aren't exactly the strings I would choose for this style of guitar, but right now these are the only strings I have. And seeing as this is a really budget job, you know, we, we really kind of blew the budget on the uh, new frets. That was such a time-consuming project. We're going to work with the strings we've got. So this has had plenty of time to set up, and you can see i got all the strings on here now. And the strings are pretty much ready to go. I didn't quite cut that off flush. That's better. So now we will get uh, a little drill bit and drill a little hole for us to put that screw in there. Alright, that should be good. We'll get that pit guard on there now. So, I kind of skipped over some of the finer details of setup on this one. If you want to see those, I'm sure I've covered them well in another video. I'm in a little bit of a rush to get this one done so I can get this video edited and out. Uh, I'll give you the quick rundown of everything that I did, basically. So, you know, first, since I've changed the height of the nut, I made sure that the string height off the nut was good. And I did that by using this 17 thousandths pick and sticking it underneath the strings at the first fret. If it made contact with the string and the fret, then it was a good height. Otherwise, I used the gauge file and took down the nut slot so that it would get to that perfect height. Then, I didn't change the height at the saddle at all because they were the grooves were actually already really deep into the saddle. What I did was I took the height off the saddle so the grooves weren't so deep compared to the top of the saddle. Now, at this point, I, you know, I've got the nut right, the saddle's height is right, so I checked the intonation. If it was a little sharp, then the saddle needs to move backwards. So if it's sharp, the string is too short, you have to lengthen it. If it's flat, the bridge is too far, and you need to bring it forward. Mine was a little sharp, so I ended up moving it back a little ways. Now it's looking pretty good. The last thing I have to do here is trim these string ends off, and then I think we are ready to play this thing. So I think we've done some pretty good work with this Kalamazoo. You know, when we got started, it was just in a, in a world of hurt. Those frets were basically unplayable. The frets were useless. The fretboard was uh, wavy. You know, we've got this in a much more playable state than when it was when we started. And I think it looks a little bit better as well. I think that boiled linseed oil really just kind of, you know, it evens it out. It doesn't make it look any newer. And it doesn't take any away any of the wear. But it does, you know, degrime it. It makes it a little more even. You know, it looks like an old, very well played guitar. So I'm going to play it a little bit for you, we'll see how this goes.
Well, I think it it plays pretty well. Typically, you wouldn't put the uh, phosphor bronze strings on a guitar like this. Typically, you'd stick with more of a nickel or you know something with a little softer sound. But you know, I think for what I had available for this, this thing turned out pretty good. I'm I'm real happy with it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. This week ended up being a little bit more of a tell video, telling you what I've done. I, you know, it's been a little bit busier, so I've had to juggle several projects this week, but I covered a lot of ground on this guitar. So once again, I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you later.